for joining. Uh, my name is Sam Furio. I'm the outreach coordinator for MDE's building decarbonization team. I will be moderating this afternoon's session. For those of you that have emailed the building decarbonization team or given us a call, I am the face behind uh, the email and the phone. So pleasure to um, speak to you all today about uh, benchmarking and reporting. Um, thank you for, for joining the fourth BEPS informational session within a series of four in August and early September, which were announced on July 15th. Uh, today, Dr. Zach Brizola, also known as Dr. Decarb from one of our earlier sessions, uh, will be talking through benchmarking and reporting with a focus on the official benchmarking guide. We are also joined by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Energy Star Portfolio Manager team. First, uh, for a run of show for today, we will give a brief intro uh, from our side, and then Brendan Hall with EPA Energy Star will talk about Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Just so you all know, this session is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the Building Energy Performance Standards YouTube playlist on Maryland Department of the Environment's YouTube page. There you can find all of our previous outreach sessions over the last month. Uh, if you were unable to attend some of them, you can catch up there. There will be a portion for, as, as, the, as, as it has been for the last few sessions, there will be a portion for live Q&A at the end, uh, but please bear with us as we go through our presentations first. Just so you know, for those of you that maybe this might be the first session, uh, the chat has been disabled. In order to submit questions for the Q&A, you'll need to click on the activities button which is found in the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, the button shows a circle, triangle, square logo, and uh, the Q&A feature is uh, hidden within this button. We'll also be doing a poll uh, early on in this session, and you can access the poll feature also within this activities button. Uh, that, again, is in the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, and it's a square, triangle, circle. So without further ado, I'd like to now introduce Dr. Zach Brazola, Section Head of Maryland Department of Environment's Building Decarbonization Team. And uh, go ahead and take it away, Zach. Thanks very much, Sam, and welcome everybody. We're glad to have you here today. Before we dive in, uh, if you require an overview of BEPS, we are building the building energy performance standards. Uh, we point you to the previous webinars and technical documentation that's available for viewing on the department's BEPS website. You can get there with this QR code on your screen, uh, or you can search Maryland BEPS in Google. And we also have the YouTube playlist that Sam mentioned. So there's a great depth of recordings from all the previous sessions if you want to dive in deeper. If you want to be added to our BEPS email list, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the right side of your screen. Today's webinar is focused on a specific aspect of BEPS implementation, but if you have, the, namely the benchmarking and reporting guide, but if you have any questions regarding the proposed regulation, you may contact the building decarbonization team via the email address or phone number at the bottom of the screen. So into the agenda for today. First, I'll give you a little bit of introduction to benchmarking. Then I'm gonna hand it over to the Energy Star team Brendan uh, for, uh, uh, to talk about his section and about the tool in general. And then we'll go into a little bit more on the Maryland's BEPS benchmarking guide and our feedback request, and then save the dates for future sessions. So uh, before we get started, we have a poll question to check how familiar you are with the Energy Star Portfolio Manager tool. So uh, the poll's launched, if you click on that circle, triangle square button in the bottom right of your screen, you can get to the poll question. And choose the best number that describes your level of experience with Portfolio Manager. We know that people are gonna be in a spectrum of responses here. For some of you, this might be the very first time you're using Energy Star Portfolio Manager. For others, you might be very familiar with it. We just wanna get a sense of who's in the room. 
So I'll give everybody about 30 more seconds to respond. I see 30, 41 votes in. So uh, we, this is just a good po point for everyone. Uh, we're, you can raise your hand, but it won't actually do anything right now. If you have a specific question, please put it in the Q&A uh, or fill out the poll, which is in the, uh, and right now, if you're trying to fill in, uh, use the poll, which is that circle, triangle, square button, the bottom right, and click poll. All right, give everyone just another moment. I still see some votes coming in. All righty. I'm going to end the poll right here. So we got uh, a bunch of different votes. Sorry if I cut you off. Uh, didn't mean to just try to keep us moving today. We have a broad spectrum of experience. So 15 people with no previous experience, uh, 14 with basic knowledge, nine with limited understanding, four with intermediate, and 10 people that are advanced. So kind of as we expected, it seems like a lot of people at least are familiar with it. Uh, for those of you that are brand new, uh, hopefully today we'll give you a high level, uh, a high level overview, uh, but we encourage you to go to the portfolio managers uh, training to get into the kind of 101 level on how to use Portfolio Manager before you dive into the uh, actually using it and the guide itself. So why are we talking about Portfolio Manager and benchmarking? If we go to the next slide, please. For, per the uh, proposed Building Energy Performance Standard Regulation, starting in 2025, owners of covered buildings will be required to report energy data to MDE through the Energy Star Portfolio Manager tool. Property and energy use data must be entered into Portfolio Manager before June 1st, 2025. So how do you actually get started with benchmarking? Well, every year, starting in 2025, by that June 1st deadline, you must enter that data to track your annual greenhouse energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. The good news is there are over 4,000 buildings already benchmarking in the state. If we could go to the next slide, please. So that means that a lot of folks across the state are already doing this. And for those of you that are maybe new here, we think that there's about 9,300, our current estimate is there are about 9,300 covered buildings in the state. And so almost half of those buildings are already benchmarking, which is great. Uh, but if you're new, that's OK. You've got time. Uh, but now is the best time, better, best time to start figuring out how to use Portfolio Manager. So, uh, and also if you want to apply for exemptions uh, that we allow for in BEPS, uh, you can do that as well, but that's a separate uh, working group and webinar that we'll come to at another time. Uh, so more details to come and stay tuned. But how do you get started if you uh, back to this idea? So once you've benchmarked, then you can actually assess where do you stand compared to the standards that we have proposed and decide if you need to make any adjustments to your building to be more efficient to uh, reduce your greenhouse gases and so uh, those uh, that is an annual cycle that you will do every year uh, and it can help you figure out where to go from next so now i'm going to turn it over to brendan hall on the epa's energy star team for his presentation thank you brendan and if you want to do an intro i know we dove right in but maybe uh do a quick introduction to yourself that would be great Sure thing. Thanks, Zach. Um, so as Zach mentioned, my name is Brennan Hall. I'm with the Energy Star Buildings Branch at EPA um, and have been with the program since 2016. And I actually live in Maryland. Uh, I've lived here since 2021, so this all hits close to home, but excited to be with you all. And I'll just mention for the Energy Star program, I am one of two staff that lead support to state and local governments in the US, like the state of Maryland, um, and also lead our programs outreach to the higher education sector related to existing buildings. Let me go to the next slide. So many of you are familiar with portfolio managers, so I'll take it that you are also familiar with the Energy Star program. But if you go to the next slide, um, 
you're probably most familiar with it as a little blue label on appliances that you you know see at your home. Um, but you might not know that we also certify um, you know new single family homes as well as existing commercial and multifamily buildings and industrial or manufacturing plants. So um, we cover all those different types of structures. Go to the next slide, please. So to date, um, this is program-wide, not just for our buildings part of the program. Um, we have helped Americans save over 5 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity use, uh, over $500 billion in energy costs, and all that is translated into avoiding over 4 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, at its core, we're a partnership program, so voluntary part of the EPA, where most of it is regulatory, and that partnership is founded on a you know, principle where we can help um, consumers and others sort of save money and energy, um, and it benefits the nation through reduced um, greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide. And this, uh, this graphic just underscores why um, the buildings part of our program exists. You can see the sort of proportion of US greenhouse gas emissions attributable back to residential and commercial buildings. So it's almost a third of emissions in the US um, come from, from those properties when you distribute electricity, uh, emissions from electricity use to um, those sectors. So it's significant, and um, that's why we exist as a program. And we specifically focus on commercial and in multifamily buildings because individually they can um, be such large energy users and emissions generators, um, as opposed to single family homes, which individually in, in general don't account for as much energy use or emissions. Um, all right, next slide. So the, the cornerstone sort of tool or offering we have um, in our part of the program is Energy Star Portfolio Manager, which as many of you know, is a tool for tracking um, building performance. We can go to the next slide. Um, so oh, I think this might have, uh, yeah, you can just enter all those forward. So benchmarking allows you to do many things um, including you know if you have multiple buildings sort of understand the performance overall um, as well as sort of see buildings that are performing better than others or worse than others um, can also see individual building performance compared to sort of a national median or typical building for that property type and then you can identify problems by looking at trends over time you can see a spike for example in energy use one month um, and then as you improve um, you can sort of see that trend line um, go down in energy use and water use and waste of materials. So um, that's it in a nutshell, but the idea really is you can sort of manage um, what you measure um, and you're taking all this sort of diffuse information, different data sets, and um, the tool helps you sort of make heads and tails of it and have it be sort of actionable information. That's the goal. So next slide. Um, so this is, it's not sort of braggadocious, but uh, it does sort of recap sort of our, our impact um, through Portfolio Manager. Uh, we had over 300, well over 300,000 buildings benchmarked in the tool last year, which is almost a quarter of the commercial floor, floor space in the country. There are over 50 uh, jurisdictions, state or local governments that use or have selected portfolio manager for reporting requirements like Maryland BEPS um, and Canada, our neighbor to the north, um, licenses portfolio manager for use um, across the country. Um, it's also worth noting that the tool is undergoing its, its largest update in a decade currently. Um, it's well overdue, but um, we're excited for all the new sort of offerings, including um, a focus on making the tool even easier to use for, for everyone. Next slide. So uh, you heard at a high level what um, benchmarking in Portfolio Manager enables. 
but this sort of digs a level deeper into what you can actually do in the tool if you're not familiar. So it's um, assessing whole building energy use, water use, and waste of materials. Um, you can share and report data to others, track changes over time. There's a custom reporting or a reporting um, sort of feature. It's also where you can apply if you're a property type that's eligible, um, you can apply through the tool for Energy Star certification or sort of recognition, free recognition for top level performance. There's a lot of functionality. And then there's also, yeah, next slide. Um, there's also hundreds and actually, I think over a thousand different metrics, performance metrics that allow you to slice and dice and see um, performance based on how you, what matters to you or um, what matters to the program or policy you're um, sort of driven by. So there's the Energy Star score, which I mentioned is sort of our proprietary um, uh, performance metric that shows how your building compares to similar buildings nationwide in energy performance. And if you score a 75 or higher for most buildings, you're eligible for that free recognition for from EPA for top performance, which you can use to sort of promote your efficiency publicly. Um, there's also greenhouse gas emissions metrics, all the you know all the things you can track: energy use, water use, and waste of materials. So that's just a a quick synopsis. But um, we have many metrics for for you. Uh, next slide. And then um, just want to talk a little bit about how to get benchmarking done. So there are three different sort of dominant, uh, predominant ways to to um, get data into the tool. One is manual entry. One is spreadsheet upload, and one is web services. So manual entry sounds like it, or is like it sounds like. Um, so you know, sort of feverishly typing out your keyboard to get um, energy data and information about your building into the tool. Um, we also offer spreadsheet upload. So if you're, if you have uh, many buildings, large portfolio um, of buildings, this could be a way for you to get all that information in, in efficiently. Um, so there's a, sort of like a step of a set of rather um, spreadsheets that go step by step. Um, so you can use those to to get all your benchmarking information in efficiently. And then we also have web services, which is far and away the biggest driver of um, how people get data into the tool. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that is um, basically where different providers, different tools. Um, have a way to push um, energy data into Portfolio Manager behind the scenes automatically. Okay, and next slide, yeah. So one type of entity that um, provides benchmarking data, um, sometimes for, you know, the data needed for benchmarking is utilities. So we have this interactive utility map at energystar.gov forward slash utility data. Um, some utilities on this map offer data via spreadsheet. Some offer the automated sort of flow of data into the tool. But um, you can use this map. You can click on a sort of zoom around, um, click on a utility service territory, enter a zip code, and find information um, about uh, a, a service that a utility is providing and sort of how to how to tap into it. Um, and I'll just mention that EPA is supporting all Maryland utilities because the state has a requirement for all utilities to provide this data um, and to do so in a way that that prioritizes sort of ease of access and data accuracy. So the things that building owners care about. So EPA is, is supporting that work. Soon this map will be sort of completely filled in um, for the state, but um, wanted to make you aware of that resource. Next slide. So another type of entity that provides benchmarking um, is all these companies. Um, there are over 450 service and product providers, we call them, um, that can exchange data with the tool. So these are the ones that can provide data automatically. Um, these companies are far and away the biggest driver of benchmarking. Um, and so, you know, if you're if you have the Sort of ability you can you can go with go with them and I'll just note that many of these companies also offer additional services 
such as you know conducting audits or retro commissioning or retuning of building systems so they can help not only with benchmarking but improving buildings um, so just flagging that for for you next slide so just a couple more here um, i wanted to round out sort of that that's it for the most part for portfolio manager i understand in future sessions we'll give more sort of um, you know the live demo and whatnot but um, we have a few other resources i wanted to highlight one is our our vast sort of training resources resources um, so we have weekly live webinars recorded webinars um, short training videos that are actually posted to youtube and then many sort of step-by-step step guides and reference documents among others so you can um, this is all meant to be very user friendly. So you know, if you're new to the tool, you don't you aren't sort of left in the lurch. You'll you'll have support along the way, um, and you can go to the next slide. So we have um, one specific sort of set um, training set focused on compliance with um, requirements using using Portfolio Manager for that purpose. So. This is offered usually a few times a year, typically sort of like early um, early to mid uh, calendar year um, because most reporting requirements fall sort of middle, you know, middle of the year, late, um, early fall. Um, and we have this series that's, you know, walks through how to use the tool, sort of nuts and bolts, and then parts two and three then turn towards, okay, you know, what do I, what does this mean? What do these results mean? And how can I um, actually act on this information to improve my building? So I'd encourage you to check out um, that set of trainings if you're interested. Um, you can sort of flag it for later once we launch it in 2025, or we have recorded versions of those webinars posted if you're chopping at the bit. Next slide. And then, we have two rebate finders I wanted to make you aware of. One is for Energy Star product categories, so where EPA sort of has a has that mark for efficiency. Um, you can see all, all those category types there. And the other is one that's posted, uh, created by Ut uh, the organization Utility Genius, and that's for product categories that Energy Star doesn't have certification for. Um, those few types there, so commercial HVAC, lighting, and building automation. Um, so those two rebate finders could be helpful in helping you sort of defray the cost of improvement. Um, so I'd encourage you to look at those resources. And then I think I have one last slide. And yeah, it's our help desk. So this is, if you have any questions about how to benchmark in Portfolio Manager, um, we have hundreds of FAQs. You know, we have that whatever three hundred thousand buildings using the tool each year. Um, there have been many questions asked, <laughs> and we've provided many answers. So this is an invaluable sort of site um, to to quickly find through a search bar or through the navigation um, an answer to your question. We also um, have a have a help desk. I guess that's in the name, but we have a a, a way you can send in a ticket. Or, or message and get a response within two business days, usually much quicker um, if you're not finding your answer through the FAQs. Um, and just one last note is we're creating a new sort of master FAQ that pulls together a lot of compliance related um, FAQs in, in one place. So that's um, one to be on the lookout for soon. And um, I think that's it from me, but I'll hand, hand it back over to Zach. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brendan. We really appreciate you coming in today and, and sharing with us. And this is just a reminder for everyone here, you know, Maryland isn't the only jurisdiction that has benchmarking requirements that is using, you know, as Brendan said, there's always over 50 jurisdictions using portfolio manager. So I'm sure there are questions you have that that FAQ can help you answer that those one on 101 level trainings, the kind of how to benchmark can help you get started. Our goal that we'll be sharing in a moment in this draft benchmarking and reporting guide is to provide additional clarity for the unique specifics of Maryland's proposed BEPS regulation and the benchmarking we do here. But I just want to, again, you know, if you reach out to us, us with 
benchmarking questions, a lot of them, we're just going to refer you right back to the EPA's help desk because they are the experts. Uh, and so just wanted to say to everyone here, start there first. Uh, if you have additional questions, once you really get into it, uh, that are specific to an, the MDE side of this, we're happy to answer those questions. And I also just want to encourage you all to put your questions in uh, in the Q&A feature. We're going to get to those really soon and really excited to answer your burning questions. But I'll actually take the moment just to maybe make a clarification to, this, to one of the questions uh, and just flag again. You know, portfolio Manager is a really useful tool that's being used across the country. And there's those, you know, 20, that stat, statistic that Brendan shared, 25% of the commercial floor area is using it. And so each property owner is looking for different things out of their Portfolio Manager account. That's why you might look about water use. You might look about different metrics. I just want to clarify the Energy Star score, for example. I just want to clarify that for the Maryland BEPS, the two key metrics that we're benchmarking on are direct greenhouse gas emissions and site energy use intensity. So those are the two key metrics that we're looking for. Uh, we'll, and that's reflected in the benchmarking guide when we get there, but I just wanted to make that clear for everybody that's here today. So uh, we will be sharing the benchmarking guide with you to uh, actually go back one slide, Sam. Uh, uh, the reporting guide is now available. We will be sharing it with you uh, shortly in the chat. And we are really looking forward to your constructive feedback because this will help us make the guide clearer for all covered buildings reporting to MDE. We want to thank you in advance for sharing your expertise and experiences for those of you that are pros at this. And also for those that are new, once you've done a little bit of training, if you still have open questions, that feedback will also help us uh, tailor the guide to all covered building owners in Maryland. What we often hear is that people are in very different places with benchmarking, and we're here to learn from each other and to help you all succeed in benchmarking. Uh, please read the benchmarking guide and consider filling out this survey. You can reach it right now via the QR code or save the link in the chat, um, as well as we'll put that link in the YouTube recording if you ever want to come back to it. Uh, and you'll be able to provide some high-level feedback at the top of the guide on the overall document but we also have individual sections broken out so that, that are optional, where you can provide feedback on very specific sections and the guidance we provide. Uh, feel free to uh, provide that feedback, and we're asking for that feedback by October 1st. And the reason we're asking for that, preferably by that time frame, we'll still accept it afterwards, but we are going to be hosting another section, uh, another session, which I'll talk about in a minute, and we want to incorporate your feedback. Uh, for that session. So on the next slide, oh, and, and I'll just, I guess I, I didn't finish that last bit on that slide, is that we're going to use your feedback to revise the draft and publish a final version of this benchmarking reporting guide when the regulation is adopted. Now, on to the next question. We'll be sharing the link to that guide shortly, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what's in it. The first section is all about creating an account in Portfolio Manager. And then adding your property to Portfolio Manager with some of the basic requirements for doing that. Uh, we have a section on the exclusions that you might uh, find for Maryland-specific BEPS implementation. These are things like EV chargers uh, and uh, food service facilities that are very specific to the Maryland regulations. Uh, then we have how to add meters and enter utility data how to connect and share your property with MDE. And this is the handshake that actually lets you provide that data to us and for us to see it every year. And then also how to manage shared properties so that you are sharing the right ones with us. If you're in multiple states, we, we don't need to see your property in Delaware or Pennsylvania, but make sure, but you might have them in Portfolio Manager already. So just sharing the ones that are in Maryland and covered under the BEPS law. Uh, third, we'll, we have a little bit on third-party verification of benchmarking data, and then a whole page of resources for using Energy Star Portfolio Manager. I just also want to mention on the exclusion side, we know that there uh, are some differences for those building owners in Montgomery County. We want to let you know we're working with the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection to streamline this process. We're definitely and make sure that you can benchmark for both jurisdictions really easily. We're happy to take your feedback on how to improve this process within the requirements of the law. 
which is that you must report to both jurisdictions. Uh, but we also want to reassure everyone that we are, or you must report to MDE. Uh, and, and Montgomery County has their own benchmarking as well. And But we also want to reassure everyone that we're working to make this as smooth as possible. So with that, I want to just talk about the future sessions. Uh, we will hold the next benchmarking and reporting working group session on October 15th at 1 p.m. And we'll send out, uh, we can send out that invitation to everyone on this list, but we also have a new sign up form for us that just went in the chat. Um, so we encourage you actually to sign up again if you want to attend these sessions and future sessions where we'll be talking about campus compliance. You'll notice when I went through the high level, uh, there are campuses in Maryland, universities, or uh, for example, hospitals are, are benchmarked in portfolio manager as campuses. Uh, that's a separate set of guidance that we're working on apart from this main guide. Uh, it will eventually all be part of our guidance, but we want to deal with that specific niche group separately. So uh, we're going to host that session on October 22nd at 1 p.m. And that will work on defining, refining that guidance then. We'll also be having a affordable housing provider working group session on October 24th at 11 a.m. So again, sign up for those sessions at the link in your chat. And uh, we're really looking forward to your questions. And feel free, as I said before, to email us at the beps.mde at maryland.gov email or give us a phone call. And you can also uh, contact the Energy Star Portfolio Manager team through the building's help desk. So at, that, at this point, we're going to drop the link to the guide in the chat. It is also available at the bottom of the Maryland BEPS webpage. You'll see an appendix section, and the benchmarking and reporting guide is now live there. And you can find the guide there. You can also find the guide uh, now at the link in the chat. So I'm looking forward to getting into the questions. All right. Thank you, Zach. Without further ado, let's move into the Q&A portion of this afternoon's webinar. Um, OK. So just a reminder, if uh, you ha have not been able to find it yet, or maybe you joined the session late, uh, you can access the Q&A feature via the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner of the screen. There's an activities button with a tra or square triangle circle. Click on that, you can get to the Q&A feature. It looks like we're already getting some questions in, so that's great. And we're going to start moving through them. We've got just under 30 minutes left in our session for today, so we'll see how many we can get through this afternoon. Uh, as always, if we are not able to get to your questions during today's session, uh, we can um, work to get to them in future engagement sessions, or you can uh, send us some messages to either to the MDE BEPS team via our BEPS email on the screen or to Energy Star if, if you have any uh, questions related to the benchmarking tool. So without further ado, Let's get into them. So first question, if you're ready, Dr. D. Carb, I've got, I think this one's for MDE. I'm benchmarking for a covered building. What is the annual basis we should use, fiscal year or calendar year? This is a great question. Yes, we are focused on calendar year. So January 1st to December 31st of every year. And that's what you're going to benchmark based on is your energy use in that data. And that way, everyone has different calendar years, uh, fiscal years. If you're the federal government, if you're the state government, if you're a private entity, everyone has different fiscal years. So just make sure as you're putting your data together, it is for calendar year. And we are benchmarking uh, this by this June, by June 1st of 2025 for calendar year 2024 data. And so that's really what we're focusing in on. And then obviously, and then the next year would be ca calendar year 2025 data by June 1st of 2026. So I hope that helps answer that question. Thank you for that, Dr. Decarb. Okay, moving right along. Next one up for you from oop, Anonymous. Let's see. Okay, not necessarily, this is for MDE, 
Uh, not necessarily a question based on Energy Star portfolio manager, but what is the deadline to file for an exemption? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. And I'm going to just uh, point you for the most part on exemptions. We're going to have a working group. Uh, we haven't announced the date yet, but it's coming soon for the exemption process. And we'll outline the timeline, the forms, the, the kind of all of that uh, in the future. And so that, and there's also helpful to know that there might be different types of, there are different types of exemption under the regulation. And so those different types might have different time frames uh, that we're working towards. So uh, the answer there is coming soon for all the details on that. Thank you for that. Okay, moving right along. We're cruising now. Just a reminder, you got a question, you can submit it in the Q&A feature in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Click that activities button, circle triangle square, it's right there. Click on Q&A and uh, let us hear what you have to say. So moving right along. Okay, another question for you, Dr. Decarb. I think this is for MDE. Am I just required to input electricity and natural gas use for BEPS? I do not have water, waste, et cetera, broken out for this covered building. So does, does Maryland BEPS need data on uh, water use and waste, um, you know, waste from covered buildings? Yes, this is a great question. And I was trying to get at that a little bit earlier. For Maryland BEPS, we only care about your net direct emissions. And again, for benchmarking purposes, your site energy use intensity. So that any energy use, right, whether it's natural gas, fuel oil, number two uh, diesel, things like that, uh, and electricity use, those are the kinds of inputs uh, that you need to provide into Portfolio Manager for Maryland BEPS regulation. Uh, again, it, it's not just electricity and natural gas, it's any fuel use you use at that building. So for many buildings, that is electricity and natural gas, but it might vary based on your specific situation. I, I will note though that other programs, if you're working, if you're using this uh, Portfolio Manager for other programs, they might require that. Uh, but for the purposes of Maryland BEPS, uh, energy use data and not water and waste is required. Thank you for that. And thank you for that question submission. Okay, moving right along. Um, this one is from Raquel. How many years back should we go with existing data? Uh, we have to input or Raquel has to input data bill by bill, so uh, they do not want to create any more work that is necessary. Thank you. Yeah, Raquel, thank you for your your question. So first of all, uh, we are work. I just want to also mention that we're working, as as Brendan said, we're working with all the utilities in Maryland uh, for all the electric and gas companies to provide that data to you in a spreadsheet format, or if they're investor-owned utilities with a certain number of customers, provide that actually to you through the Portfolio Manager API. And so then once you go through a handshake with those utilities, if you're in the API category, the data will actually just show up in your account. And we have some details on that in the guide itself. Uh, but if you're in the spreadsheet category, which is basically all the other utilities, they will send you the data and uh, you'll be able to upload that spreadsheet into your account. So hopefully you don't have to manually enter it. Now, delivered fuels are a little different. Uh, so that is a kind of separate process. But uh, that's just a high level. To answer your specific question, uh, the only year back you have to go through is 2024. So it's we start with in 2025 with calendar year 2024 data. So you just need to enter data starting from January 1st of 2024. I hope that answers your question. Thank you for that, Dr. DeCarb. And thank you, Raquel, for that question. Thanks for being here. We've got, it's 1.40, just time check. If you've got any questions, uh, you can submit them in the Q&A feature again. So 
we're moving right along. I think I've got one that might go to Brendan now. Brendan, if you're ready, we've got a question coming at you. Ready. All right. So let's see who asked this one. Tommy asked this question. Multiple buildings on a property. Some are connected through indoor walkways. Would this be considered a campus? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, got it. So this is a good question. I'll say there's some gray area um, in terms of, you know, what EPA considers a campus for our program's purposes. We have five property types that if they contain multiple buildings, we require to certify at a campus level. And that is um, K through 12 school, multifamily housing, uh, senior living, hotel, and hospital. Um, and then sometimes there are cases where, um, you know, we have to do a case, by, you know, there's a case by case determination on if it's truly a campus or a single building. Um, and I would, I would, I might actually say like, you know, this specific question might be one that has to be determined by MDE, um, you know, in terms of how compliance works um, for this specific building. So not sort of a non-answer, but hope, but hopefully um, you can sort it out with MDE. Yeah, and I, I just add, you know, we encourage you to come to the campus working group where we'll go into a little bit more details on the campus side. Uh, if you want to see more in general, there's a couple, you know, if if you're not one of those property types that Brendan mentioned that the Energy Star tool says benchmarks as a campus, um, we, we have a specific definition of what makes you a campus. Um, and that's, you know, things like shared, uh, shared equipment, HVAC equipment, and shared, um, or, or shared electric or gas meter, for example. Uh, those kinds of things, if they're shared between the building, that tends to uh, put you into the campus world where you're actually really, we call it a campus and or, you know, we, you're looking at it as one building because we can't actually split apart your energy data from the benchmarking standpoint. Uh, but if you have more questions on that front, I encourage you to come to the sign up for and come to the campus working group. We're gonna really dive in deep there to spell that all out for everybody. And, and we will, just, oh, go ahead, Brendan. So I was gonna add for our program, I mentioned that sort of case by case determination. The, the, ki the key sort of thing is whether it's considered functional space, um, you know, in service of the, of what the, you know, what the building does. Generally, we wouldn't consider a walkway to be functional space. So I just wanted to add that um, note. But if it's something like underground, parking or an atrium or ground floor retail or a lobby or something like that, then that would be considered functional space. And we would, that would be something we'd be more apt to consider, you know, a single property or, or campus. Great, thank you both for, for taking that question, appreciate it. And thank you, Tommy, for your question submission. Okay, let's see what else we got coming in here. Okay, I, Brendan, I think I might have another one here for you from Joanna, Okay, if you're ready. Um, is there a certification for Energy Star? Yeah, so I was mentioning um, on the call, we have two sort of voluntary, two recognitions um, for top performance available from EPA. Um, one is energy efficiency, so Energy Star certification. Most property types that can see uh, a one to 100 Energy Star score, if you score 75 or higher, um, you can apply for a free recognition from EPA. The process there is you apply through the tool and then you have to have a site visit from um, uh, someone to confirm sort of that the, the data is accurate and the indoor environment is safe. And then the application has to be signed on by a, a professional engineer or registered architect. Um, so that's the process there. 
So we have the energy efficiency one, and then later this year, actually, we're launching a new recognition for um, low carbon, and that is includes efficiency as well as um, green power and direct emissions requirements. So voluntary, available to most buildings. There's additional process, um, and it's it's sort of a separate thing wholly from the uh, Maryland BEPS, but it does it is connected through Portfolio Manager. Thank you for that, Brendan. And thank you, Joanna, for your question submission. Okay, moving right along. Let's give Brendan a break for a second. We'll uh, jump back to an MDE question. So scrolling along here. Bear with me one second. So we've got a question from Frank Hennigan. Thank you, Frank, for being here and thanks for your question. So Frank said, Boston has a pre-approved list of vendors to help with reporting and verification. While the info is available at the Energy Star Portfolio Manager website, it can be hard to find. Will Maryland have a similar list to apply and share qualifications? Thank you, Frank, for that question. So at this moment, we are pointing to that portfolio manager website, basically lookup tool for you to go and look for uh, providers in Maryland. And we've put that actually, when you get to the guide, you'll see it's right there in the third party verification section uh, with information on you know, to go and search for that uh, list. So we've tried to make it really easy to find the portfolio manager list of providers. Um, in terms of the vendor list, uh, this is one of the resources that the Clean Buildings Hub, the Maryland Clean Buildings Hub, which is run out of the Maryland Energy Administration, is working on as uh, vendors to help you to help support the building decarbonization efforts across the state. And so I encourage you to stay tuned. Uh, we collaborate with them a lot to help provide resources such as this kind of thing uh, for building owners. Thank you, Dr. Etarb. And thanks, Frank, for that question. Moving right along, Dr. Decarb, I think I got another one here for you from Cassandra. Let's see. Okay. Cassandra asked Does the 2024 year info submitted in June 2025 need to be validated? Great question, Cassandra. I think you're talking about third-party verification. If so, third-party verification doesn't start until 2026 for 2025 data. So this first year, we just want you to make sure you're entering the data for your property, and you do have to validate it. You check a box. I think you check a box, or basically, you know, making sure that you're putting in the right data and that you internally have looked it over. Uh, but the requirements for third-party verification don't kick in until 2025 and or 2026 for 2025 data and every five years thereafter. And so at that point, that's when you would have a third party. Uh, usually you'll share the data, you'll do a property share with them, they'll look over your data, they'll uh, basically sign a form for you to say, I've reviewed this, this looks good. Um, and that's the kind of, go and you're you know benchmarking properly. And so that's what that's all about. But the good news is we have another year and a half that we have to think about that. Um, so we're, uh, we have some time to sort out all the details on that one, but this is quite common across a lot of the different, uh, jurisdictions that are doing benchmarking today. Thank you for that answer. And thank you, Cassandra, for your question. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, next question. I think this one's going to go to MDE. So when you're ready, Dr. Decarb. So let's see, who is this from? Okay, this is from Anonymous. Can this be used for a vacant building that is going to be renovated? Sounds like this is only for existing buildings. If the answer is no, is there a program for vacant properties? 
This is a great question. So if you have a vacant property, a property that is fully unoccupied, we will actually have an exemption form that you can fill out for that year and say that this property is empty, uh, there's no one in there. And so we will basically just say, okay, you don't need to benchmark in that and report that data to MDE in that year. So that's an example of some of the exemptions. And so that's the kind of one of those pieces that we'll be rolling out a little bit later here. But that's, you know, in this example, it sounds like, you know, maybe you, you've emptied the building, you're going to renovate. Even if you're renovating the building and there's no one actually occupying that building officially in a year, uh, you can submit that form to MDE and we will uh, basically evaluate that and give you an exemption for the year so that you don't have to uh, provide this this uh, uh, data because if there's no one really using the building, that it doesn't make any sense. And so uh, there's some more details on what that is in the proposed regulation and the accompanying technical manual. If you want to find out more specifics, uh, that's a good place to start. But we will have a form and when we get to the exemptions working group, uh, a little later this fall, we'll talk about it more there. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Dr. Decarb, and thank you for that question submission. Quick time check, 1.53, seven minutes left. If, if you guys have any questions, feel free to submit them. Q&A feature, bottom right-hand corner of the screen, circle, triangle, square. Click on that button. It'll get you to Q&A. Let us know what you have to say. And, um, you know, if we can't get to it today, there's a lot of rhyming words in this phrase I'm throwing out right now. Um, we will work to get to them in future engagement sessions uh, that, that Zach talked about in his, in his presentation. So, or you can send them to our, to our email. And we'll work to get your response. So, a few minutes left. Let's see what else we got in the queue. Okay, we got a question from Drew. Has, let me see, I lost track of it. MPT, Maryland Public Television. Oh, I love Maryland Public Television. Thank you for being here. I love all your programs. Antiques Roadshow, it's, it's one of the best. Uh, MPT has several transmission buildings across Maryland. Do we need to have a separate account for each building? if they have separate BG&E accounts? Yes, so in general, any freestanding building must be benchmarked individually as a single building. And, and so even though you own all of those buildings, uh, you're going to create a, you'll have a portfolio manager account that is you know, the MPT portfolio manager account. Uh, but then within that, you will have multiple buildings uh, each one of those you will then uh, share with MDE as your covered buildings. And so uh, that would then be, you would associate the correct BG account with that specific building. So say you have three transmission buildings across the state, you'd report those three covered buildings to MDE, uh, but you'd all do it from your one account. So it's pretty easy. You connect your account with MDE and say, I want to share building one building two and building three maybe building four is uh, only fifteen thousand square feet so you wouldn't actually even have to share building four you just share building one two and three with mde send that to us and and that would be your reporting for the next uh, for this calendar year that's a really good question because i know it it really is uh uh can be a little confusing for folks, but yeah, that's we're generally thinking about individual buildings. Thank you for that, Dr. Decarb, and thank you, Drew, for that great question. Okay, now this question is a little bit bigger, and I think it's going to take both of our our panelists here today um, to to get an answer for this one. But so, Zach and, and Brendan, when you're ready, I'm going to pitch it to you both. Um, we got a question about how do I account for diesel fuel and delivered fuels in the data? Uh, we use number two fuel for our heating, and I see that there is probably a difference between what we store and what we use 
depending on storms or equipment failures? Do you have any suggestions? So that might, that that's a bigger question and a absolutely awesome question. Zach or Brendan, do you guys have any insights on that? Yeah, so I'll start at a high level from the program at, from you know MDE from the BEPS perspective, you know you definitely all that delivered fuel going to your building definitely needs to be included in your benchmarking and reporting to MDE. So that's really uh, a key uh, a key part. It, this is incorporative incorporates all delivered fuel to your building. Uh, Brendan, do you think you could talk a little bit about that accounting over the calendar years? Sure. I mean. It, and I'll just say like this, I don't know if MDE plans to provide further sort of guidance or requirements related to this, but there are two options in the tool for tracking bulk or delivered fuels. One is entering the sort of whole amount um, entered on the date that it was delivered. So the delivery amount, the other option is um, sort of breaking it up into monthly estimates, but just making sure that the total over whatever period you're looking at adds up to um, the shift amount. So two different ways to get at the same thing um, and absent sort of additional MBE guidance, those would be available uh, depending on how you want to benchmark. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, so I think maybe just to, probably the easiest way to understand it for folks is you'll get one deliver, you know, say you get five deliveries in the course of a year you might actually break those deliveries up over the course of your heating cycle by estimates. And you can do that in the tool to say, well, we think we use, you know, we got a delivery in December and we think we, and then a delivery in February, we used half of the December and in, in December and half in January. And that's an example of how you can break it up. And I know, uh, and uh, this is one of those great ones uh, that has some really good FAQ uh, online as well for folks. So. Uh, when you have that, uh, if you have that question, that's a good place to go and look and start with that. Thank you, Dr. Decarb, and thanks, Brendan, for that great answer. Uh, unfortunately, folks, I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. We're, we're just about at the end, 159, and you still got to hear my spiel at the end. So, um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to we're going to take any questions we didn't get to today, we'll make note of them and we'll work to address them in future engagement sessions. Now, um, just want to say thank you all for being here today. This was the last engagement session of a series of four that we pitched on July 15th. Um, so thank you to all who have been able to join throughout the uh, this experience. And thank you to some of you who have maybe been attending all four sessions. And if you didn't get to attend, We've got them uploaded on our BEPS YouTube playlist, which I think uh, Michelle dropped in the chat for you earlier. So please go back and watch them. This one will be up on YouTube if if you want to watch it again or send it to your friends. And uh, that sign-up form that you use to get to these engagement sessions, you can use them again for the three upcoming working groups uh, that, that Zach talked about earlier. So we hope you can join in for those as well. Um, and so, as always, thank you all for being here. We're going to wrap it up there. And thanks to our panelists, uh, Brendan Hall and, and Zach Brazola. Appreciate the time and hope everyone has a great rest of your day.